Hello, everyone. My name is William Mucker. I am a client executive with Camaplan, and I would like to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, Biofuse Tissue Welding, Revolutionary and Disruptive Technology with Scott Sanders, President of Biofuse. I'd also like to thank you for joining us today, Scott. As a quick note, please be aware that Scott will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to use the Q&A function on your screen, not the chat to pose your questions whenever they cross your mind. They will be saved and addressed once the presentation portion ends and the Q&A portion begins. Before we get started, I do have a brief disclosure to go through. Everything presented in today's webinar is strictly for educational purposes. Camaplan is a neutral third-party administrator of IRAs. We are not attorneys, CPAs, or financial advisors. If it comes to a time where you need advice in any one of those fields, we highly recommend you consult with your team of professionals. We are more than happy to be a part of the dialogue with the team of, of professionals to ensure that uh, the investment process is quick and seamless. We do not sell any investments at Camaplan, nor do we endorse any products. We will never call you about the next best investment opportunity. We believe that you should always do your own due diligence before investing your money, whether it be your retirement funds or otherwise. Once you have found the investment that is right for you, we will help you open your account, fund that account, and facilitate the transaction into that investment. Here is my contact information if you or anyone that you know who you believe can benefit from the information that is discussed today. Um, have any questions about that, please do not hesitate to contact me. I would be more than happy to help. And without further ado, I'll pass the controls over to you, Scott. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I will go ahead and, and uh, share my screen now. Okay, so uh, question, oh, I see. Um, let me make Scott the host here. One second here. Sorry, Scott, I'm trying to get you to make you the host. Uh, I just promoted him to panelist. Scott, can you hear us? Oh, there we go. You had to do that right, Will. Can you folks now hear me? Yes, perfect. Super. Uh, do I need, uh, Scott, can you speak as well? Sanders. Yeah, I can speak. Good, You're okay. showing up with Scott Kemp's. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm okay. not sure why, but it doesn't really much matter. Uh, so, great. Uh, appreciate being invited to this. Um, and would love to tell you about Biofuse. Let's talk about Biofuse for a moment. Uh, first slide. And the next one, if you'd please. Uh, uh, so here's our forward-looking statement. I'll give you a moment to read that. I'm sure you're very familiar with uh, with these. Yeah, safe Harbor uh, forward-looking uh, statement. Okay, great. Let's start. Who's Biofuse? So Biofuse is a company that I really want to stress two key points. One is that Biofuse has an RF tissue sealing technology. Basically, uh, vessels, veins, arteries, pedicles that they can seal, which means they can stop the blood flow. The next one, and this is the real exciting part, is tissue welding. So that's welding cross-linking tissue. So two unique and, and proven. I think that's a key uh, element throughout this whole presentation. This is proven technology. A very robust product pipeline. What does that really equate to? That equates to a lot of clinical procedures. One of our biggest challenges is focus, 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 because there's so many places that this technology has been proven. A very clear pathway to FDA clearance, 510K clearance, because we already have a 510K clearance on this technology. We've enhanced the generator and going back for a secondary clearance with the FDA. Solid IP protection of patent pendings and trade secrets. 
And number five is that we can do what nobody else does. And that is replace staples and clips. And you're gonna learn in this presentation why that's so important because it's a significant procedure and a growing procedure. We're talking about literally hundreds of thousands of procedures done in the US with staples and sutures and clips that ha are, have known problems that this welding technology can replace. And this is all led by a very experienced and highly skilled commercial team. Let me talk about them. Next slide. So you can think of the organization as having two different sides to the organization. One is a very technical side, and that's led by Albert Jurgens. I've known Albert for over 30 years, and no one knows RF generators better than Albert. 30 plus years of medical device, electronics and physics development. He's brought a lot of RF generators, very similar to the kind of generators we have at Biofuse successfully through the FDA, successfully through manufacturing, successful product launches. And those generators have actually been a part of sales to other bigger companies. Albert really knows his stuff. And he's got a team in Eastern Europe that works under him on some of the advanced R&D development and the algorithms. On the commercial side is Mike Adler, Vice President of Business Development. Mike and Scott Sanders, who I'll talk about in a moment, have worked together before. Mike knows distributors. Mike has a great relationship with distributors and knows how to sell products. So Mike's on the team on the commercial sales side. And this is all led by Scott Sanders. We are very, very fortunate to have Scott Sanders. I brought Scott into Biofuse because Scott's the one who actually years ago introduced me to this technology when we worked together. So Scott knows RF generators. He knows competitive generators. He can work side by side with physicians and animal labs and cadaver labs. Most physicians are blown away that he isn't already a physician. He knows clinical procedures. He knows sales and marketing. He knows overall company leadership. And we're very fortunate to have Scott on the team. And with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Scott Sanders. Thanks a lot, Frank. Um, you know, the one thing I think that's very unique about our team, and I'll just add another note, is that RF Energy, albeit it's been around for quite a long time, and there's a lot of people that think they understand it and kind of group it together into a generic type of a, of a category. This by no means is not generic. It's extremely unique. And what we do is critical through all the procedures, because anytime you're in surgery, you're gonna be transecting vessels, you're gonna be transecting tissue, you're gonna to need to bring tissue together. And so, if you will, the, the, the way that has been done previously is using staples, sutures, or clips to reconnect tissue. But what we're gonna do is change that paradigm dramatically, is we're gonna also seal vessels, seal tissue, but more importantly, we're going to weld tissue and not have to use the mechanical means of a stapler. And that is going to disrupt so many aspects of the surgical market, of the procedural market, because it's unheard of. No one has ever seen or believed that you could take and replace a mechanical means to bring tissue together to stop the bleeding. Um, but we're going to show them that we can. And that's what makes us extremely exciting. And this market is absolutely astronomically large. If you can imagine, um, you know, you take a, a Medtronic and a J&J, &J, they have built their medical products company based on the fact of super sta sutures, staples, and clips um, are the mainstay of that, of that market. And so it's well established that those technologies are used. Uh, a lot of people feel they're here to stay. And this is where 
we come in and we say, hang on a minute, we've got a technology that's going to be extremely um, uh, important for you to take a look at because this has never been done before. So I think that the, um, um, the net net of this is we're, gonna, we're, we're making a name for ourselves already in the marketplace. We're already, and we haven't really done much of anything other than uh, some two papers that were presented, one in Dublin, Ireland, Dublin, Ireland and one in, in Bordeaux, France, kind of outlining what the technology does. So I think that that's where we are, um, you know, we're starting to build momentum. The, um, the same, getting messages from everybody here. Um, okay. Um, so one thing I brought up before is that there is a known failure rate with using staples. Because if you imagine you've got a piece of tissue you've got a, a bow you're trying to put together that a mechanical means is gonna be able to bring together little pieces of tissue. There's bound to be leaks. If there's leaks, there's infection, septus. One of the largest costs in a hospital is having a, an asthmatic leak. And the rate of that happening is, is significant. And the problem is, it's not only extremely expensive to have to reoperate, but unfortunately, a lot of those uh, leaks end up in, in death because when you have that kind of infection coursing through the body, the, you know, you've got to act immediately. And this is where, um, you know, like our, our uh, advisor, our board, our board of directors who are colorectal surgeons and, and Joe, who's an anesthesiologist, know firsthand what the, the whole um ex, uh, ex issue is around having these kind of problems they know that it's it's very tense and you don't rest at night until the patient is through the the difficult part so the bottom line is there these things are increasing the cost of, of medical care delivery to the hospital to the insurer and at biofuse what our solution is is to go ahead introduce welding because we're not introducing any kind of mechan any mechanical means, it's all natural, using RF energy to bring together the tissue and weld it together and basically eliminate the, the cost of, of having a, a leak of any kind. So this is what is totally gonna set the market on its head because no one's ever seen this kind of thing before. The product that, um, that Frank mentioned, uh, you'll see down in the, the second window, is the vessel sealer. And we're actually gonna be coming to market with a vessel seal device for sealing tissue, sealing vessels, um, working on the documentation of the pressures, birth strengths, so we can get that submitted to the FDA. And then hopefully in the, Midsummer time frame will have clearance for our vessel sealing device. And that leads to a discussion about, okay, you know you, we know we can vessel seal. We've talked to you about welding. What about the welding in? It kind of begs the question uh, to the people that we're talking to who are going to be extremely interested in the ability to weld together about, like in that third picture, that you actually can bring the pieces together, have it be viable, have it actually trans, transfer uh, blood across that, that weld zone. And the net net is that we're going to have not only our, our vessel sealing device, we're not going to go in and duplicate everything that's been done in vessel sealing because we want to save all of that for transitioning into the welding market and the welding instruments. So uh, Frank mentioned the pipeline. If you think of any device that is used using staples, they're fair game for us to duplicate those devices and turn them into welding instruments. So the need in the market for these devices 
is twofold. How do I stop bleeding and how do I reconnect tissue? And to be honest with you, um, you know, Ethicon, Medtronic, Olympus have done a great job of, of vessel sealing, of showing their technology is viable and can work fine uh, to replace like a clip. But to, in order to reconnect tissue, you typically have to suture or use a more elaborate stapling device to bring the edges together. And so those two elements, stop bleeding and reconnect tissue, are the drivers for why Biofuse is going to be successful in this marketplace. We know we're going to be able to seal vessels with RF energy, and we know we're going to be able to weld tissue with our RF energy. So zero mechanical elements are involved. It's all done through the natural in, in, induction of the RF energy. And this is what is going to really showcase us as being 100% different and a game changer and really disrupting the marketplace. Kind of a review here. If you think about the EEA, end to anastomosis device, that's actually going to be our first uh, instrument we're going to develop. And you might ask, well, why is that? Well, the reason is, is that we know the anastomotic leaks in, in an end to end anastomosis is a, is a major problem. Costs hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to billions of dollars. And all you're doing in this traditional approach is taking a anvil and a receptor, bringing them together and putting down a line of staples around the perimeter of the bow. And so that mechanical element is all that's holding together the tissue. And so guess what? When you use welding, it doesn't take one day, one week, one month for it to actually um, work. It's instantaneously. When you weld tissue together, you instantly have a weld, which is viable to allow blood to flow across the weld zone. And this is what I think is really different in as far as setting us apart too from vessel sealing, because vessel sealing, it does a great job of blocking off the flow of blood, but that seal zone is not able to transfer uh, blood across that area. With Biofuse, we're able to develop a, a weld zone and have it be viable to be able to have blood flow across. Why is that important? Because it, in, it creates the integrity of that weld is actually enhanced because you have viable tissue on both ends. I mentioned the two papers that were um, presented, uh, one in Bordeaux and one in Dublin, and that was in October and September of last year. Uh, this is important because the more that we can get out in front of the clinical group, uh, colorectal surgeons, oncologists, whomever, to talk about this technology, to make them aware of it, the better it is then for them to start seeking out what is this technology? Um, how can I use it? Where can I find it? And we're already getting those questions. And I think that the more that we do this, the clinical papers, the podium discussions, the uh, conventions where we can actually start showing product, it's going to just increase uh, exponentially the interest level in what we're bringing to the table. As always, uh, when when you commercialize a product, in my, in my mind and in uh, uh, Mike Adler's mind, being sales guys, we want this to happen as soon as possible. It's all predicated on the fundraising and the ability to develop the necessary funds to be able to get into that next stage. I mentioned that we're already in in um, um, in line with the vessel ceiling. We should have that clearance, hopefully, in that. I'm thinking midsummer time frame. We'll see, and then immediately be able to jump right into uh, distribution and selling that product. The end and end anastomosis. We still need to get the RF energy or the um, uh, the prototype device developed. Start collecting the data the FDA will need to clear us, and what kind of allowances are going to make. So probably sometime in the first quarter of 2025. 
we'll be ready to start doing a um, a launch of the of the um, end to end anastomosis device. Then follows the linear welder, which is nothing more than a straight stapler, uh, but turned into a welder and can be used across a multiplicity of procedures. And I just go back to what Frank said about the key to our success is focus. We literally could go in any direction you would want to take us. Um, doesn't matter the procedure. It doesn't matter the instrument being used. We will have an instrument for it. We could have an instrument for it, but we don't want to dilute our message. We don't want to dilute the approach that we take by going in five different directions because we know that we can do it. It's, it's better to start with one that is known to be an issue, an EEA, and an anastomosis welder, we know is going to solve a problem. Then we go to the next phase, and then we add in the additional instruments after that. So if you take a look at the um, our approach here, we really are set up to start launching our vessel sealer second half of this year. We've already identified key distributors. We've already have um, uh, people in the wings lined up that want to join us. Uh, funding that we'll, we'll have will be used to hire additional help in the um, sales and marketing end of it to further promote the product. And then also um, to build up that distribution uh, element for these targeted markets. Because again, the first market is the colorectal surgery market. And as Frank mentioned, huge market. Um, and it, there's, there's, we're not going to be uh, shy of having uh, tremendous interest and tremendous demand for our product. But we want to make sure it's, it's done in a very metered manner, controlled. So we're not taking a shotgun approach out and saying, here, everybody, here's what we have using our key opinion leaders, using uh, people who are well-versed in the tech, in the, not only the technology available, but in the procedure, we're going to be able to get them on board with the welding technology. And I mentioned earlier, it starts with leveraging our vessel sealing customers who are first to the, to the game here with using it for sealing vessels and knowing that that same box that they use for vessel sealing is going to be used in welding. That's that's a key point. This isn't developing another box. That's the last thing a hospital needs are more boxes. They want generators that are versatile, that are able to be expanded with technology, expanded with instrumentation. That's exactly what we bring to the table. The ability to take a generator and open up the usage across a, a wide a, a continuum of not only surgical procedures, but instrumentation that's used. So you can see the, the vessel ceiling revenue uh, that we have planned and the welding revenue that we have planned. Um, you know, vessel ceiling, you've got some great companies out there that do vessel ceiling. Um, the key is we're going to get in there with vessel sealing because of what we bring behind it, which is welding. And so when we go to a surgeon and say, doctor, uh, could you try our vessel sealer and get a feel for what the technology is able to do from a vessel sealing standpoint? And by the way, we're going to work with you in the early days when we develop the instrumentation uh, prototyping for welding. They're going to want to get on board with that. And like I said, colorectal surgeons are fast to pick up new technology because they know the problem and they understand that they want to make a name for themselves as being the first to wave the flag for the technology that's going to solve a problem. And I think that that's where we're going to be able to give them the uh, armamentarium that they need to address the issues that they're faced with every day. So we've got projections for vessel sealing. And, you know, again, this is one where uh, between Mike and I and going out meeting up with the key uh, surgeons that we've 
already talked to, distributors that we've talked to, to start getting this ball rolling and to get get Biofuse's name in the marketplace really is what it's doing as a viable contender for not only the vessel ceiling, but also for the uh, tissue welding, which again, we're gonna start with the end and anastomosis device. Uh, large number of procedures, uh, a great ASP, and it, it really does point to the, the picture that if you can do the most difficult anastomos anastomosis uh, that staples can do, but there's a large uh, 15 to 17, 18% uh, breakdown of potential leaks that could occur. But if we go after that market, and we know we're going to be able to, as Frank mentioned, that this is proven technology. It has been used. Uh, um, it has been documented. And all we're doing is we're taking it to the next uh, logical uh, generation, another new gen a new generator that's updated instrumentation that goes hand in glove with that generator and gives us the chance to walk down the path of showing success in a market where really since the staples were first developed, there has not been much change in that marketplace. Uh, really, the only change was a was a automatic or a, a powered stapler, which gives you more consistency in closing of that staple. But that's it. There's been nothing new under the sun that addresses this market. Biofuses is going to introduce that change, which is going to net out um, total disruption within the marketplace because it's going to be readily realized that this is something that we should be um, the doctor that we should be looking at because we know we have a problem. And I think that's where the um, um, that's where the success is going to come from all the docs that we have that are going to be interested in moving this forward. So what's the opportunity that we offer? So we offer a a product that's going to fit the market need. And not only from a surgical standpoint, a patient care standpoint, and a healthcare provider standpoint, that's the triple P that is talked about in a lot of hospitals. That is significant because if your product does not address those elements, a hospital does not want to look at a new product at all. They've got enough new things, quote unquote, new that they have on their plate that you know a few doctors want to use it, but this is one where they're going to be able to define and establish exactly what this technology brings to the table, which helps get it through the hospital system faster, help get it through the healthcare providers, insurance companies, because we have a better alternative. Revenue. Nothing better than having a great gross margin on a product. And because it's disposable, be able to have that re reoccurring revenue. In the staple market, they have their little staple loads that's uh, there, it's separate SKUs. So they have a tremendous inventory of different staple types, different cartridges. They're not gonna have that with us. They're gonna have a device that delivers the RF energy to weld the tissue and allows for a very easy transition from the initial use of the product, using it in trials, through the purchase of the product. And the best for last, I think we really need to highly uh, talk about the intellectual property trade secret. And if there was anybody that was able to do this kind of technology, over the last 30 years, which was when Ligature started, don't you think that those companies, they have the brain power, they've got the, the ability with engineering to make it happen? No, they don't, because it would have happened. And I was involved in the early days when, when Valley Lab was trying to do this technology, do a welding technology um, on bowel and lung, could not make it happen. So the ability to have the trade secrets, to have certain patents that are going to lock us in, 
to get the clearance. But more importantly, if you think back to how did this even come about? The Eopatan Institute is known for welding and has had years and years and years of experience welding dissimilar metals, uh, welding in different conditions. They brought all that to the table and to the medical um, side of it to really lock us in on a technology that's going to keep other people and it has kept other people out of this marketplace. I would say that um, over the last five more years, RF energy has become a uh, very interesting to a lot of companies uh, because that expertise is limited within the realm of a handful of companies. And so, you know, Boulder Surgical just recently sold off to hold Laho Logics. You've got uh, Ethicon, you know, buying Surge RX. You've got Medtronic acquiring Peak Surgical. So anything that had to do with getting the mechanical elements of stopping bleeding and bringing tissue together really brings up a lot of attention within the marketplace for companies to say, hmm, maybe I should get into this. Um, I don't want to get lost in the in the shuffle when other companies are acquiring technology, we may need to ante up and step up to the plate, uh, which is why companies like a uh, Striker, well, OmniGuide, uh, Cemetery Surgical, why they've acquired technology which can augment what they're already doing. So the offering that we have is basically going to be used to continue path to regulatory clearance for our vessel sealer, for our hand pieces, to get the uh, the patents pending, uh, take uh, uh, issued, and uh, um, hire additional management that we would need, and then to purchase inventory and start the initial development of the N and N nosphomosis device. So, um, you know, it we're only we can only move as fast as the funds come in. And so if the funds come in and we're able to jump right on it, believe me, we're, we're waiting with bated breath to be able to jump in and start doing these projects and working through them so that we've got the um, momentum to move forward with the, um, with the, the killer, which is the welding system. Uh, Joe, are you there? So just for a note, we've Which added to do, this is our you have to add a, uh, uh, you have to add it as a host. Um, unfortunately, Scott, it's a little tricky. Uh, if you can no, do that, not if listen. not, okay. That's all right. Run with it. You got it. Doing great. If you'd like, I can add, if, if Joe's in the, the presentation now, if he raises his hand, I can add him as a, as a panel. Okay, as well. yeah, you could add Joe because it's important to have him uh, bring in his expertise and uh, what what he brings to the table. Perfect. I think I just he just raised his hand. I think I was able to add him as a panelist. It might take okay just a second for him to to join over here. He there is. he is. He's on now. Thanks. Of course. Hi, Joe. Looks like Joe is muted at the moment. There we go. Perfect. Sorry about that, everybody. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Perfect, Joe. Uh, oh, thank you, Frank. So listen, um, everyone, thank you for joining today. Um, and Scott and Frank for a terrific presentation. Let me just share with, with the group kind of my view um, from the perch where I sit, which is on the board of directors. I joined this company uh, happily a, a year ago, became the chairman of the board in January of this year. And for me, a, as a physician, an entrepreneur, uh, an investor, a, a company has to meet three basic criteria in order for me to get excited and interested in. And, and certainly Biofuse met all of those for me. And, and the first, and, and you heard about this uh, all morning here, 
was, is there an unmet, or in this case, an unmet surgical need, a medical need for what we're doing? And I think the answer is absolutely yes. I've certainly seen the issues uh, that, that, that Scott has talked about, um, the, the perioperative morbidity and mortality um, for leaks and horrible infections and bleeding with patients that have had problems with staples and sutures rupturing or leaking. Um, I, I trained at Johns Hopkins. We did lots and lots of colorectal surgery when I was there as an anesthesiologist. I, I remember fondly or not so fondly uh, having to bring patients back to the operating room from the surgical ICU or, or directly from the ER when they had problems um, with, with their anastomosis perhaps leaking or bleeding. So I remember it uh, kind of like it was yesterday. So in other words, I've seen it myself, the unmet medical need is there. I think the other piece that has to be there too is a desire for the market for new technologies that can address that unmet medical need. And this this welder technology certainly got my attention um, w without a doubt. And so I think not only does the device have to seem viable, there needs to be a good regulatory path and a, and a regulatory uh, well thought out uh, way to regulatory approval. And as an ex FDA regulator, I can tell you that uh, I wouldn't have joined otherwise. I think that the timeline that, that uh, Scott and Frank have laid out is, uh, is very doable um, and meaningful. And finally, I, I think that a, a company is only as good as the operators within that company. And clearly with, with Scott and Frank at, at the helm, uh, I feel very confident uh, as a director and as the chairman of the board um, that we're gonna get there and, and make a difference for people. And uh, I myself am an investor in this company. so. Um, I, I believe in it. I have from the beginning. I'm quite excited to, to move things along. I, I hope you all are as excited as we are. And um, I'll, I'll end it there. And, and we'll be happy to take any other questions. Why don't you just uh, uh, go to the last slide, please, uh, Scott Sanders? Oh, there you go. Uh, Thank you, Joe. So why for all of you should you invest? I mean, uh, for the same reasons I think that I invested, because this is a unique technology. It's a needed technology. There's many, many things out there uh, that are kind of what we in, in the drug world call old wine, new bottle, just a little bit of a, of a change, not making much of a difference. I think in my mind, this one, particularly the welding, is revolutionary in that sense. No one else has done that. No one else has been able to do it. I think you've seen some of the pictures on this slide deck that tell us we'll be able to do it. I think it's not just about the, the first offering that we had in circular welding with end-to-end -end anastomosis, but also the potential for linear welding. That's key as well, not only in colorectal surgery, but also in other types of surgeries like thoracic surgery or esophageal. From the regulatory standpoint, a 510K clearance, uh, I believe is reasonable, responsible, rational, and relatively quick. And that's another uh, reason why I invested myself. As I mentioned, I, I think we have a very um, well-performing team between Frank and Scott working together to make this work with the others. I, I, don't, I don't want to dismiss all the others, but these are the two that I work with mostly. Um, I think there's a real there there. The, um, the, the market is, is big enough. And um, when I say that, I mean in the billions of dollars, and that's not a small market. Um, there are other companies, too, that have uh, been acquired. I think Scott pointed this out in a couple of the closing slides uh, about where our financials could be and where this could lead us uh, as a company um, by a larger buyout. So that that would be terrific. And um, I, I think, you know, finally, um, you know, as an as a entrepreneur, this is the kind of stuff that, that I love. And this is the kind of stuff that I, I love to be involved in. And so for the same reasons, that, that I like it. And as I said, it met those three criteria, those original ones that I talked about, unmet medical need, it's got a quick path through the regulatory cycle, and, and it's got a team of operators. Um, that's important. As an ex-military guy, as, as an ex-anesthesiologist, um, operations are critical, and the, oper and the operation is only as good as the operators. And I think we've got that here. So I think I'll pause there and uh, open it up to any other questions that y'all may have. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, if anybody wants to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen for any questions you, uh, for anybody presenting today, please do that. Um, I'd be happy to hear your questions. Um, question uh, to get us started off. Uh, obviously, as a self-directed IRA custodian, we're, we're appealing to a lot of people you, looking for investments with their uh, to use with their retirement plans. 
Um, what can you see the benefit of using your retirement plan for this specific structure? Would you like me to try to take that question? This, this is Joe. Yes, please. Sure. Um, for me, that that's exactly I, I've put both kinds of money uh, in, into this into this company. And, and so in, in my mind, um, you know, retirement money is is money that you see kind of off in the future. It's it's not the kind of money that, that I think you expect to return on immediately, like with, within a week or two or even a year. But it, but in this particular case, um, we, we have a well thought out pipeline to get us there in the next two to three, maybe four years. And that's actually kind of a nice short run for a turnaround um, and, and a, an exit event, so to speak. That's how I thought about it with, with my own investment. And so, but this is kind of one of the things you want to feel comfortable as an investor to kind of put it in the drawer and not think about it too hard, but you want to make sure that you put it in good hands. And um, in my view, I think I put my own money in good hands. Um, I, I wouldn't have put it there otherwise. And so that's how I think about it. That This is not you know, again, this is biotech and surgical tech investing. That this is not like you're going to get in into some type of bond or, or some kind of bank account. This is venture capital, and um, you, you put the money at risk and take the risk. But those risks have to be reasonable. And you know, again, I I think I use my own anesthesiology training and thinking about the kind of risk that I used to take with patients' lives in my hands. Uh, it's the same way that I approach investing, not only for myself but for anybody else that I would represent. And so, um, and, and as, a, as a board member of this company, um, I, I, I feel compelled to do the best job I do for you and for myself too. Great, thank you for that. Um, so are there any other applications for this type of technology that, that may not have, you may not have been uh, able to touch on as much as you'd like in the presentation? There's a lot of Scott. So, Think of any kind of surgical discipline, any kind of procedure that uses suture staples and clips, it's open market for that. And uh, Joe touched on one, which is thoracic. And the, what's interesting about thoracic is that not only do you have to worry about bleeding and stopping bleeding, but you also have to worry somewhat about air leaks. So they're always putting rows of staples in, uh, multiple rows to not only stop the bleeding, but try and stop the air leak because the bronchia is a cartilage type um, uh, structure and it really doesn't lend itself to sealing in traditional means. But guess what? Biofuse can actually weld bronchia. So you come across a parenchyma, you can seal the parenchyma and you can weld the bronchia that's in, intertwined within the parenchyma. So taking a look at that, there's orthopedic applications where you want to weld the meniscus, um, where you want to take a um, and basically reconstruct a knee that is uh, using technology that's going to create a nice smooth plane because you're bringing it together with a weld versus suturing it or bring it together and approximating it where there could be some uh, valleys and, and, and peaks that really don't lend themselves much to uh, a successful outcome with the procedure. So whether it be, uh, you know, the gyne onc, surgical onc, oncology, um, general surgery with, with um, bariatric surgery, you can go across any of those disciplines and know and find out what staples are they using? What other instruments are they using? And that's a great place for us. That's where we're going to fit in. And I think that the, the key here is that, um, and I just go back to number two on that bullet. It's an execution play. So we're not going to jump into all these different clinical applications <clears throat> immediately. Uh, to Joe's point, it gives you kind of like an annuity. It gives you that knowledge that the pipeline is there. It's going to keep filling. It's going to keep advancing, which is key because how many investments do you ever make where you go, wow, after this one time, then what? Well, guess what? After our one product, 
we've got multiplicity of products behind that, which are going to be able to fit into a clinical application, fit into the needs of that surgical discipline. And as Frank said, I mean, you take a look at all the different aspects that a surgeon is looking to solve. If we can, if we can make a dent in solving those, it really is a it is a blockbuster because they've not had anything like this before. So um, you know, kind of being a little bit generic, if you will, or general, uh, Bill, with your question. But that's the great thing about it. There's not a clinical application, for the most part, or a procedure that we cannot impact with welding. I'll add one more thing that I forgot to add in, in my closing comments. And that's a great question about what other kind of procedures, because that, that's a, a great pipeline question. I think about esophageal procedures as well, where, where there's a lot of uh, bleeding. Clearly, the, the, the gynonc way down deep in the pelvis, uh, you had heard Scott mention. Um, what, you, what you didn't see in your deck today, but if you check out our website just this morning, we added um, Dr. Neil Hyman to our advisory team. Uh, if, if you don't know who Dr. Neil Hyman is, you, you can check him out. He's actually the um, section chief for colorectal surgery at the University of Chicago. So we're very proud to have added him just today to our, he's, he is our chief clinical advisor. So um, this is a guy who obviously knows uh, all about these particular operations and uh, the good and the bad of, of what happens in colorectal surgery. Uh, we're very happy to have him on our, on our um, advisory team. And uh, I, I bet you, if I had him here on the phone with us today, he, he could probably rattle off very many, many other types of surgeries where he could see this being used. So ju just another reason why um, I, I think the momentum is growing here for the company. And um, well, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Great, thank you for all that information. Now, um, for an investor who's looking to invest with BioFuse, what's, what's your minimum? Do you have any minimums? 20, investment? It's a, it's a good, good question. $25,000 is the minimum. Okay, great. And I see that you also have a contact us slide just in case anybody in the, in the, in the presentation today have any questions after the fact or anybody um, uh, watching this presentation have any questions, where can they reach um, Biofuse? Where can they reach Biofuse? So there is an email on our website that you, that you can get to. Um, that's, that's one option. I think there's a phone number there as well. If you would like, I'll give you my, um, personal email. If you would like that, I'll give it to you right now. That's Joe Stoffer five, seven at yahoo.com. Now I'm not the guy who would be processing your investment. I, I would hand that over, uh, to, to the people on, on the inside of Biofuse who would do that. If you have any other follow-up questions for me directly, you can always call me on my cell phone. Uh, I live here in Sarasota, Florida. I'm at 908-202-5192. So hopefully with all those mechanisms, my personal cell phone, my personal email, we'll, we'll get you um, in, into our company, hopefully many of you, as quickly as you can. I think uh, right there is a phone number that I think Scott put up for you. Um, that's our office. There's our cell phone. And that's probably the the biofusemedical.com is probably the quickest way to go or the um, but again, you can get to me directly if you'd like to, and I will get it to the right space. Uh, Bill, could we make uh, uh, Scott Kemp's the host? He'd like to add a few things, please. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to, well, you know, I'll tell you what, um, Scott, I, I might actually cut everybody off if I try to do it. I, I will surely screw that up. Uh, <laughs> but Scott Kemp's would, would be the, uh, would be would be the contact here but as i said if anyone wants to um shoot an email or call that number scott can get back to them directly is, um is, is scott in the audience right now hold on for I, a second if, if he's in there i can i can add him I as a he's, panelist not on. If he, I don't, he's not on he's, yeah he's not he's yeah, a he's panelist not. yes so he could yeah, he just raises his hand so scott just raise your hand and they'll spot you not yeah, he's he's not linked into the uh, to to the WebEx, unfortunately. Scott, do you want to just call my cell phone and I'll just uh, put your voice up to the mic?
Yeah, uh, thank you everybody for attending the, the presentation. I'm Scott Kemps. Uh, I work on the investment banking side for the company. I'm also one of the founders and a director. Um, happy to take any questions that anybody has uh, through the chat. Otherwise, uh, the best way, is, as Joe mentioned, is getting a hold of us through the, the phone number either uh, or the website. Um, I can also leave my, my personal cell number is 321-223-7785 and can be reached either there or through the company website as well. So the investment in Biofuse, as Joe mentioned, is a minimum of 25,000. It is for a common equity in the company at a $15 million pre-money valuation. Uh, we look for the milestones on that investment to uh, increase as we uh, execute on the business plan. Uh, with Scott and Frank and team. And uh, again, thank you for your time on the call. Perfect. Thank you. So it looks like uh, like a lot of people um, had their, oh, there's, oh, you put the, put it in the chat. Perfect. So it looks like uh, there are not many questions from the chat we have in today, but um, I'm, I'm glad you gave everybody your contact information. If anybody watching the recording after this goes out has any questions for you, Please be sure to reach them if, if they have any questions about how they can make this investment out of the self-directed IRA. Please feel free to contact Camaplan at camaplan.com or 215-283-2868. We'd be happy to help any questions with there uh, or with that, excuse me. Um, and I'd like to, before we close out, thank you, Scott, both Scotts, uh, Joe and Frank, Rosemary for joining us, giving you all the all the great information today. And um, yeah, I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Take Thank care. You. Have a nice Take day. Care. Bye now.